truly excited in Missouri for your wonderful Christian love and hospitality of Pastor Daniel and his wife and they show such a great care over me. I really thank God for knowing them. And we had a real great time in India a few months ago when they were there with us. And God is wonderful. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I was deeply thinking on the Holy Spirit. The Lord has given me a word to tell you that in book of Genesis chapter 27 verse 26 it says come closer to me my son and kiss me. Today the greatest call of God for His people and His people should come a step closer to God. Now there in the world a lot of things happening that are pulling God's people away from God's love, from their first love, from their commitment, from their anointing, from their high calling from, of God in their lives lot of ways, in many ways, Satan tried to pull out God's people from God. So the cry of the Holy Spirit is this, this evening. You and I are especially chosen people of God. God given us a perfect, wonderful relationship that He is our Father and we are His children. Amen. 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 He is our Father and we are His children. Yes. Every individual. Amen? Amen. So He calls His people, come closer to Me. When, when you learn, study this particular chapter of things, what was happened in chapter 27 and 26. When Isaac was very old, he, want, he felt that he would die soon and before he died, he wanted to bless his first son, Esau. So he called his first son, Esau, go to the forest, hunt some venison for me and make a good roast of it and bring it to me yeah. and I will eat it. And I'm going to bless you. Yeah. So he said, here I am. Yeah. And the father said, take your weapons and go into the forest. The mama overheard what the husband was talking to her first son. She felt this blessing should not go to the first son. She wanted to release this blessings on her second son. That's right. Amen. Amen. Mama replaces the Holy Spirit. Tonight, the Holy Spirit wants every one of you here to receive the blessings of the Father. Amen. No matter who you are, no matter what it is your situation and what is your present condition you're going through in life, but God wants to bless you in a special way tonight. Amen. How many of us ready? To receive God's blessing, it's a process. It will not jump right away from upon our head. There is a process God wants us to release His blessing upon our lives. So, the mother, Rebecca, called her son. She said, Jacob, I heard your daddy was speaking to your brother like this. And he said, she said, I don't want your brother to receive the blessings. He said, I want you to receive the blessings. I'm going to send you to your father. But he cried, Mama, no, 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 it's not possible. I am not like my brother. My brother is different. 
Your whole body is full of hairs. I am just a plain man. If my father find me that I am not his person, instead of blessing me, he will curse me. And that curse will remain the entire one generation. I don't want to do that. But Mama said, my son, listen to me. Whatever the curse you receive shall come upon me. I take it. So many of us, in the, many of us, we have a kind of bad uh, thought about Jacob. Every I have heard a lot of preachers preach very bad stuff about Jacob. He cheated his father. He did. He did not cheat his father. He just obeyed his mother. That's it. That's it. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. Somebody said he cheated his brother. He didn't even cheat with his brother. Nope. His brother already sold out his birthright and the deal was finished. Yep. Somebody said the father-in-law cheated him. Father-in-law also. He cheated his father-in-law. It's not like that. Father-in-law cheated Jacob. Yep. He did not give the girl whom he felt in fell in love. He put a different girl in the marriage night. And the next day morning saw so she was not the one who she, he loved very much. And another the Bible says he deprived of his increment. Jacob served his father twenty years. In twenty years' time he reduced his salary ten times. Who is cheating? He did not cheat his father in law. He did not cheat anybody. He was going through the process that God sending him to go through. Amen? Amen. You know, God wants to bless each and every one of us this evening. Amen. Provided we should be faithful before God and obey His few conditions. Amen? Amen. And He said, Mama, it is not possible. I'm going to be bad. I'm going to suffer a lot. Mommy said, no, my son. You just listen to what I say to you. It may not agree with your mind. Many things, what agree with the Holy Spirit does not agree with our mind. Right. In my case, whatever I wanted to do, He never allowed me to do. Yeah. I never liked Christianity. I became a Christian. I hated God, now I started to love God. I never liked to be an evangelist or a pastor in my life. That was a menial job I was thinking about. When I was in India as a young man, I had a big dreams of my future. I want to finish engineering. I want to make more money. I want to live a very luxurious life. I don't want anybody to control me. Big, big dreams of future. I was in engineering college, dreaming a lot of things. But the Lord changed my life, wow. saving me when I went to disturb a gospel meeting and harm the preacher. And I came home completely changed. Then my heart began to love God more and more. And He called me for this ministry. Initially, I did not agree. I didn't like to serve God because that, that's not a good job in India in those years. Okay. When you go to your house, they won't give you a glass of water. What? They'll pour water in your hand, you have to drink like this. <laughs> that was a condition. Especially if you are not married, you will never allow any house inside. No people will allow you. Even some many, many villages are still the same practice in existence. They don't simply allow you to to their houses, and they don't treat you. Even in Christians, born again also, they don't love, they don't give the girls in marriage to a pastor because pastor has a very pathetic life, no source of income, nothing. So they have to think a lot before they give their girls in marriage to a pastor. 
So I said, Lord, if I became a pastor, I won't get married. I won't have nobody, no girls will come for me. And oh, my life is going to be big, miserable. I don't want this ministry. I don't want to serve you. I want to become something great in the society. But the Lord called me and June 11th night, the Lord called me to the ministry. I had a dream. In the dream, a man came to me and gave this book to me, Bible in my hand. And he said, take this book, preach this book. When I come back, I will take it from you. I was so terribly disturbed. <laughs> I said, Lord, I don't want to serve. I don't want to serve. I don't, this is not my job. <laughs> this is a job I hated in my life. Wow. And that, it was a Sunday afternoon. There was a, I never had my breakfast or lunch or whatsoever. I was crying and fighting with God. Wow. Crying and fighting with God. God, I am not going to. If I make a decision like that, do you know how, how, I, I know what is going to happen? My whole family kicked me out of the house huh? because I was the only one, number first in whole generation, to accept Jesus Christ as wow. my personal savior. Wow. No Christian, no Bible, nothing. Amen. You wouldn't. So he was sitting in the in the meeting. There more than six, seven hundred young people from different churches were gathered together. And the preacher came from a different town who doesn't know anything about me. And he said, he was beginning, he began to preach on Isaiah chapter 6. Whom will go? Whom will I send? Who will go for me? I was sitting, Lord, you said anybody else, not me. I not because the word was so powerful. Yeah. That's preached in the down, deeper part of my heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made me to think a lot. I said, Lord, you send anybody. The pastor has more than seven sons. Lord, you send all the seven sons from the ministry. <laughs> Not me. I work, I make money, I earn money, I give to the ministry. But this is not a good job. <laughs> this is not a good job. I was crying. Literally cried. Wow. What happened? He preached about 15 minutes and stopped his preaching and said, I know there is a young man, the Holy Spirit is telling me, God has called him for the ministry. He is resisting the call of God in his life. Please raise your hand, where are you? He's crying. You guess what? More than hundred people raised their hands. Oh my <laughs> this man was really confused. He was from Chennai, Madras. Very recently died. He was a mighty prophet of God. Wow. And he was walking and walking and speaking in tongues and 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 he said he was really confused because more than hundred people raised his hands. He said, I am talking about one one young man, but a lot of hands are shot shot up. Please stand on you, stand on your feet. I want to pray for you. I will find out who is that person among you. Wow. But I didn't raise my hand, I didn't stand either. <laughs> <laughs> and he walked and walked and prayed and prayed and prayed. And he said, I really appreciate all of you for the decision you are having to serve God. I wish all of you should come to serve God. Kingdom of God wants every one of you. You are all blessed. But I am sorry to tell you, the man whom God shows me is not among you. Wow. He made five altar calls just for me. Wow. I never raised my hand. <laughs> then numbers went down from 100 to 60, 60 to 30, 30 to 20, 10 and 0. And he said, I know the Holy Spirit has spoken to me. He's speaking to me right now. There is a young man here sitting. God wants him to serve him. Oh my I raised him. No hands to raise up. And I slowly tried to raise my hand. 
<laughs> and this man's eyes were more powerful than the X-ray machine. And he saw me raising my hand a little bit from the far away. <laughs> I see one hand is coming up. Young man, stand up. Who are you? <laughs> and the first time the Lord exposed me before so many young people, I was crying, really. I was 19 years old. I'm continuing my edu engineering education. And I cried. I stood up and he prayed over me. He said, you are the one. God has already called you for the ministry. Come over here, he said. He made me to walk in front of all this the first time in my life. I was walking in front of so many Christian brothers and sisters. And he made me to kneel down. I knelt down. Indian preachers are very powerful. <laughs> Commanding. He said, kneel down. Said, he put his hand over me and began to prophesy. My son, God has chosen you before you father, before you formed your mother's soul for his ministry. I'm, the Lord is going to take you to many nations. He's going to raise dead from you. He's going to bring healing and deliverance. Whatsoever, you just name it, everything was promising. But I was not convinced. I said, Lord, everything sounds so good. But this is not a good job. I don't want to do this kind of job. I come from a poor family, but I want, I'm heading for a for a better kind of life, but kind of, uh, you know, high profile life. I want to, I want, I want to some kind of life. I was fighting with him. I don't like to serve you. Just taking Bible in my hand and walking street to street, house to house, talking about Jesus. Oh, this is not a good job. I don't want to do this. <laughs> and he put his hand on. I, I was, hundred percent I was not convinced before. All those prophecies that came fulfilled in my ministry and that time I said I'm not convinced because in my deeper part of my heart serving God is not a good job. That was my, my opinion at that time. Mm -hmm. And this man began to prophesy very strongly and he said, my son, are you ashamed of my job? Are you ashamed of my ministry? He said, I was not ashamed to walk in the streets of Jerusalem for you. I was not ashamed to hang almost naked on the cross of Calvary for you. I was not ashamed to give my life for you. Are you ashamed of my gospel? Jesus. Wow. That was the area I was struggling. When I heard this one, I surrendered my life to God. Here I am, Lord. Hallelujah. Take me. Yeah. Now I am full time in the ministry for 52 years. I traveled 87 nations. And God used it mightily many, many areas of this world. Hallelujah. My friends, I'm telling you, many times God does not allow you to do what you want you to what you want to do. He always takes authority over our lives and makes us to do what He wants us to do. Amen? Yeah. That's the first question. Paul, when he got converted, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Here I am. I surrender my life. A whole future in your hand. What do you want me to do? He said, Jacob, he said, he said, Mommy, this is not good. I don't want to go through this. But mother, Confront him. He said, go to the flock and get some good lamb and I will make the best food for your father. You know, mommy knows the father's taste, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Amen? Yeah. Mothers knows the husband's taste. Amen. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit knows what God's will in your life. The mother represents the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we don't understand. Because our mind is definite mind, but God's mind is indefinite, omniscient. We cannot understand God's will right away. You know, as we keep walking towards sin, as we keep walking towards the purposes of God, and God will step by step, step by step, He will reveal His will to us 
So we will have a mighty ministry and mighty Christian life and we will become a blessing to many, especially blessing to the kingdom of God. Yes, hallelujah. Here, even though Jacob does not like, he obeyed his mother. He went to the flock and made, brought some such a good lamb to, to mother. She butchered him and made a very good food. You know, mother knows, as I already told, what the taste of the Father. The Holy Spirit knows the secret of your blessing of God in your life. Amen? He knows. Jacob did not know what is happening to him. But I am telling you, in this world you may not know what is happening to you in your life. But there is a will and purpose of God and that purpose of God will make it happen and He will glorify His name to each and every one of you. Amen. If we go under His directions. Amen. Sometimes we walk ahead of God. Sometimes we walk behind God. But God wants you to walk with Him together. Yes. Walk with Him together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Walk Him to walk Him. You, you walk, you, he wants you to walk with Him together. Yes. So, Jacob obeyed and mother prepared a good meal. The only one meal that can satisfy the Heavenly Father is the sacrifice of Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. God. Yes. No other meal can satisfy Him. Heavenly Father, the Lamb for Jacob laid his life for the Jacob's blessing. A Lamb was sacrificed his life, his body. So Jesus sacrificed his life and body and his life for you and for me so that we can be blessed. We can become the child and children of God. Amen. 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 She prepared. Everything now she is. So Jacob, come on. What do you want me to do, Mama? You don't do anything. I do something for you. He removed his dress and put on the brother's dress. Sure. Amen? Amen. You know, everybody has a smell in their body. Yeah. And now when my wife goes to washing, she smells the clothes whether it washed well or not. Okay. And she knows whose, whose shirt belongs to. Even though a bunch of clothes is there, she smells my clothes very well. This is my husband's cloth. Uh -huh. So she put the older brother, she removed all the dresses of Jacob and put on the older brother's dress. Jesus. You know, sometimes we want to have two dress together. We want the world, we want the spirit. Yes. We want heaven, we want earth. We want the world, we want the heaven. It's not possible. You have to remove and God will give you your life, the best life for you. Amen. We do not know how our life will not be, you know, we do not know how, how our life will be. But God knows how, how is our life will be. Yes. Friends, she removed all things. You know, Paul repeatedly says in every episode, Remove the old man, the first man, the natures of Adam, the qualities of Adam, the character of Adam is a flesh. We need to remove the fleshly characters from our life to inherit the spiritual character so that we can walk closer to God. Yes. Amen? Yes. We must walk, come closer to God. Yes. God wants you to come close. He said, my son, come closer to me. Yes. Yes. Now. Hallelujah. And kiss me. God is watching. God is wanting. God is seeking. God is, you know, requesting. God is calling his people to come closer to him. Leave everything. Come to me. I will bless you. I will guide you. I will lead you. Hallelujah. What is your need? I am ready to do that need for you. Always when Jesus asked one question to everyone who approached him, he said, what do you want me to do for you? Somebody said, I need eyes. I said, yes, get it. Somebody said, I want to speak. Receive, you're speaking. Somebody wants healing. 
receive your healing. So whatever they came with a purpose and the Lord asked them, what do you want me to do for you? And he did it. Yes, he did. Friends, you don't want to be about your future. Your future is in God's hand. It's not in your pastor's hand. It's not in anybody your boss's hand. It's not in a company's hand. Your life is in the hands of God. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she removed him. And there's a lot of things. And he had given him a shower, cleanse him. And put the brother's cloth, and he shook the and she took the the skins of the lamb and wrapped over oh, his two hands and his two and also his neck all over neck. Mommy, why are this? Why are you doing this one, my son? He just obey. You don't know because if father wants to touch you, he want to feel that is his older brother, not you. He says, Jesus, the Holy Spirit in every service is what you come to the church. Either Sunday night or Tuesday night or Wednesday night or Sunday morning or evening. In every service, the Holy Spirit is making you worthy to come closer to God. Yeah. Amen? Amen. He's, 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 he's a makeup man. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is, is a beautician. To make you so beautiful, so acceptable by the heavenly Father in every aspect. The mother was looking very carefully. How can I change my younger son to like my older son? This is what the Holy Spirit is what he's doing today. The Holy Spirit wants you and me to become like Jesus Christ, our older brother. In every services, you have a touch of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit begin make you to, to appear just like Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, yeah. We cannot do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We'll be failed. How many times have you failed? Many times. When you give in the hands of God, hands of the Holy Spirit yourself, you will never be failed. You'll be successful. You will be glad. You will be rejoicing. You will be having enjoying victory and power in your life. Amen. And he gave all the dress. I'll, I'll, later I'll tell you about the dress. And everything is ready now. And mommy taught us something extra. Taught him. He said, the meal plate in the hand, the two hands. And he went to the father's chamber. Father was not fully blind, but he could not identify who is this. So he knocked the door. Daddy says, who is this? He said, I am your older son Esau. Hello. Jacob tells lies and truth. Huh? Does he tell lies and truth? You know, when you want to go to Heavenly Father, and everybody, anybody want to go to Heavenly Father. You cannot go by your own name. Right. You cannot go by my name, Francis Jackson. You cannot go by the name of Apostle Daniel. You cannot go by anybody's name. That the only name under the sun among men has commanded that we might be saved. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. You can go to the Father in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That you are accepted. Within ourselves, we are not complete. But Jesus is complete. He is perfect. Amen? Amen? You can go to the Father in the name of Jesus, not in your name. How do we finish our prayer? We finish in the Pastor Jackson's name? No. Your prayer will return back immediately. Amen? We ask in the name of Jesus. Because in Jesus' name, we got the authority, we got the privilege, we got the power, we got the, 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 we got the, uh, we got the open door to go to the Heavenly Father and we will not be rejected. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Hallelujah. Whenever you go to God, you can go in the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. 
not in the name of organization, not in the name of any individual, or even any name of anybody in this world. Only one name. One name. The name of all names. Yes. The name that's sweeter than all other names. Yes. The name of Jesus yes. Christ yes. our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said, come closer to me. He wanted to put his hand on over his hand. And he says, yeah, this is my first son, but the voice is like Jacob, but the body is like Esau, the father's declared. The story, the big story goes up. And he brings a foot and he present, he said, my son, how come you got this quick, the meal? Amen? Because he was a hunter. He know how much time will take for a hunter to go to the father's and uh, fetch an animal and make a food and bring it. It takes time. But within a few hours time, Jacob brings you the mile, <coughs> the, the, the meal plate before the father. He said, how come it happened to you? Do you know the one answer? He said, your God made it to happen. Amen? Amen? You know, our salvation is not made by anybody. It is predestinated by God Almighty who created heaven and earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We, our salvation is not from a man. It's not from an organization. Not from an individual. Not from an evangelist. Not from any, many, any servant of God. My salvation is predetermination determined before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. You are not here by accident. Right. You are here. Jesus saw you before the foundation of the world. Yes. God saw you before the foundation of the world okay. in Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The Father asked him, to, How is it happened? Yes, my salvation has happened because of His grace, Hallelujah. because of His mercy. I never expected, I never desired, I never wanted, I never even asked to, I never even liked to be saved. I was a communist leader. Authorized communist leader of India at the age of 16, before, uh, yeah, before the law of this nation, before the law of this party, I was adopted two years ahead of time because of the contribution I made for the Communist Party of India. I became the approved member of the portfolio of the Communist Party of India. Wow. But God has chosen me. I come, as I told you, I come from the poorest of the poor family. Among nine children, I am number seven. Wow. God has chosen me first. You know what? God loves number seven. God knows all the numbers. But number seven is very precious to me. And I became the open door for all the people of my family to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I baptized my mother, my father, my older brother, my younger brother, and his wife and the children. And all my family now serve the Lord in different parts of the nation and also different parts of the world. Amen. Is that wonderful? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am excited. I am so glad. I am privileged. Amen. I can say I am gifted yes. to take the gospel, yes. to take the word of God, yes. to pray for the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has performed signs and wonders and miracles in the ministry right then in India. And he gave the meals plate. And Father had the meal. He, he accepted the meal and some. And then Jacob went a little bit away from him. He was shivering because he was not the right person to take the food to the daddy. Uh -oh. And he, 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 felt, he, was, he felt so guilty in his, inside of his heart. Yeah. He says, I am not worthy. I am not worthy. Yeah. I am not worthy. Yeah. I am not worthy. I am not worthy. This is the true feeling for in you and me. Lord, I am not worthy for the salvation. I am not worthy to have you, my Lord. I am not worthy to be heaven. I am not worthy to anything that you provide for me. I am, Lord, simply unworthy person. 
and you made me worthy. Hallelujah. You accepted me worthy. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now the father says, my son, come closer to me. Here I want to tell you, friends, what is taking you away from God? What that bothers you not to go forward for God in your life? Take it out. Come one step to God. Somebody wants to standing far away from God. And uh, let's say, say, Lord, I love you, I love you. It's not that. It's not that way. God does not love in... God don't like flying kisses. You know flying kisses? Like, yeah. You can kiss a person long way, like, like this. Yeah. God does not like in flying kisses. God loves in real kiss. You must come to Him. You must give Him a hug. And He will put His hand upon you, around you. And He will hug you and He will smell you. Hallelujah. Jacob was really thrilled and afraid and, and he knew he was not a worthy person. He just obeyed his, his mama and he, he, was, he was confused what is going to happen. He is the final stage and he was coming closer to the daddy and daddy said, Come on son, come closer, come closer, come closer. He come closer and God and the, the, the daddy said, Give me a hug. And the son gives a hug to the father. Yeah. And the father put his two hands around the son and he smelled to the garment. Just imagine, he smelled the garment. Yeah. It's not the Jacob's garment. Yeah. It is the brother's garment. Yeah. When you come to God, God does not smell you because he knows how bad you smell. <laughs> how bad I smell. Hallelujah. He smelled Jesus who is on me. Hallelujah. He smelled Jesus on you. Jesus covered you. He covers your shame. He covers your sin. He covers your sickness. He covers your failure. He covers everything. That God demands. He smell the garment of the first son. He give us garment of salvation, garment of righteousness, garment of holiness, and garment of joy. And what else? What else? You just you, the mother began to you know decorate the son so he would be accepted. The time will come, friends. We are going to see the father as Jacob did. We will not be rejected. Will be accepted through Jesus Christ. Yes. And now he he talked to him and said, What is smell? The smell of the garment of my son. Yes. And now the father released all the blessings that was about to be on the, on the Lord Jesus Christ. All the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ transferred on you and me. We are the second sons. Yes. We are the second child. Amen. He was the first one. For you and for me, he went to the wilderness. Because he went to the wilderness, because he went to Calvary, we can enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Father's chamber. Amen. Amen. Father's chamber. And the father says, my son. And he spelled and said, what a beautiful son God blessed me to have. But we are not beautiful. We know who we are. We know our conditions. We know our failures. We know our, our disappointments. We know our own weaknesses. But God was so good. He saw all our weaknesses. Hallelujah. Nothing under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Under the blood of Jesus Christ. He covered everything. He forgiven everything. And now you see, He releases, number one, the blessings from heaven. God wants you to have, first, the spiritual blessings. Amen. That is eternal. Yes. All the blessings what we have in this world is not eternal. Yes. They are for some time. They will not come to eternity. First, God wants you and me to enjoy a wonderful spiritual high standard of Christian life. My God. That's the first blessing. And all of the blessings are said, added to you. Three, four blessings. Heavenly blessings, earthly blessings, and generational blessings. Amen. Amen. All blessings in Jesus Christ as pronounced over you, over me, Amen. for me and my family. 
Yes. And you know, the evening, I was sitting down there, I, was, I, I brought a different message. But the Holy Spirit was so strongly, you know, forcing me and said, Lord, again you are forcing me. Okay, I give up my thing. I obey. I obey. I want everyone to stand a little bit quick in this place and make a commitment. How far you are from your God tonight? How is your spiritual life? How is your prayer life? How is your godly life? How is your total Christian life? Are you really close with God? Are you really closer to God? If not, the voice of the Father calling over you. My son, my daughter, come closer to me and give me a hug and kiss me and love me. I am deeply waiting for your love. I am waiting for years for your true love, your consecrated love, your dedicated love. Will you make a decision tonight? <coughs> Lord, I will come closer to you. Yes, yes. Every day I will come closer to you. Yes, every day I will hug you. Yes. Both in the morning and the evening and every time. Yes. I feel, Lord, I want to come to you. I want to be with you. Yes. Yes. I want to love you. Yes. My priority is you, O oh Lord Jesus. Yes. You are my priority. I love you. Forgive me, Father God, any failures or weaknesses that are in me and covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I come closer to you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you make a decision? I want to live closer to God. The rest of my life. And raise your hand and come into your life. May the Lord God richly bless you, fulfill the desire of your heart, and be with you and strengthen you, and continually accept you as his precious child. And let him put his right hand around you and lead you through. I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let the love of God fall upon every one of you, 24 by 7, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.